will start together chapter number five, biological membranes. In the beginning, we will start by lesson number one, the structure of biological membranes. So we have specific learning objectives. Number one, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to evaluate the importance of membranes to cells, emphasizing the various functions. Also, you will be able to describe the fluid mosaic model of cell membrane structure and relate properties of the lipid bilayer to properties and functions of cell membranes. So let's get started. And also you have to describe the ways that membrane proteins associate with the lipid bilayer. So let's get started. Here in the beginning, in order for cells to uh, be created, they must have a cell membrane. How did the first cell membrane develop? This is a question. But before even we start together, see this video, watch this video, I have to draw your attention to a very important point. To carry out the many chemical reactions necessary to sustain life, the cell must maintain an appropriate internal environment. Every cell is surrounded by a plasma membrane. A plasma membrane is the selectively permeable surface membrane that encloses the cell contents and through which all materials entering or leaving the cell must pass. This is the plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane, it has a physically separates the cell content from the outside world and defines it as a distinct ent uh, entity. By regulating passive materials into and out of the cell, the plasma membrane helps maintain a life supporting internal environment. As we discussed before in chapter number four, eukaryotic cells are characterized by numerous organelles that are surrounded by membranes. And uh, also some of these organelles, including the uh, nuclear envelope, the uh, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosomes, vesicles, and vacuoles as well, so all of those are examples of the cell organelles that contain membranes or membrane enclosed organelles. Biological membranes are complex, dynamic structures made up of lipid and protein molecules that are in contact motion. The properties of membranes allow them to perform many vital functions. They regulate the passage of materials, divide the cell into compartments, serve as surfaces for chemical reactions, adhere to and communicate with other cells, and even transmit signals between the environment and the interior of the cell. Membranes are also an essential part of energy transfer and storage systems. How do the properties of cell membranes enable the cell to carry on such varied functions? This will be discussed during this chapter. So, Long before the development of the, electron, uh, of the electron micrographs, scientists knew that the membrane consists of both lipid and protein, but work by researchers in 1920s and 1930s had provided clues that the core of cell membrane consists of lipid, mostly phospholipid, that we discussed fully in chapter three. The mammalian red blood cell, for example, have only a plasma membrane and no internal membrane compartments. By comparing the surface area with the total number of lipid molecules per cell, early investigators had calculated that the membrane is no more than two phospholipid molecules thick. Studies by early researchers also showed that when purified membrane lipids were dispersed in water, they could form flexible, self-sealing bilayers that would spontaneously round up from forming closed compartments or vesicles. All of those will be clearly illustrated during our lesson. First of all, the phospholipid molecules have unique attributes and properties that allow them to form pi-layered structures. 
and they are primarily responsible for the physical properties of the biological membranes. Recall from chapter number three that we discussed together earlier that phospholipids are amphibathic molecules. And we illustrated the meaning of amphibathic molecules by saying the amphibathic molecules is or are molecules that containing both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. So the uh, phospholipid, they are containing of two hydrophobic water-fearing fatty acid chains linked to two of the three carbons of the glycerol molecules. Okay, then they are bonded to the third carbon of the glycerol is a negatively charged hydrophilic, which is water-loving phosphate group, which in, in turn is linked to a polar hydrophilic organic compound. Molecules of this type have distinct hydropho hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. And all lipids that make up the core biological membranes have amphibathic characteristics that cause them to interact with water in predictable ways. So we can even go farther in order to see this fantastic thing. Surely because one end of each phospholipid is associated freely with water and opposite end does not, such like this figure here, this is the uh, phospholipid bilayer and this is the phosphate group and those are the lipid tails. So we can say that one end of each phospholipid associates freely with water, this is the hydroph hydrophilic, okay, while the opposite end does not because it's a hydrophobic or water fearing. The most stable orientation for them to assume uh, in water result in the formation of a bilayer structure. This is the bilayer structure. This arrangement allow the hydrophilic heads, those are the hydrophilic or water loving, okay, of the phospholipid to be in contact with the aqueous environment, which is even outside or in the cytosol, while the, uh, the oily tails, this is the, uh, the lipid tails, the hydrophobic fatty acid chains, are buried in the interior of the structure away from the water molecules. This hydrophobic core of the bilayer is the barrier that prevents many types of small hydrophilic molecules, including ions, amino acids, and even organic metabolites from passing from one side of the membrane to another. And it allows a cell to maintain different chemical environments within each membrane compartments as well. So the physical studies on artificial vesicles formed from isolated membrane lipids also revealed another important property associated with the hydrophobic core. At normal biological temperatures, the fatty acid chain in the core are in constant motion as part of hydrocarbon chains rotate around the carbon to carbon bones. This constant hydrocarbon chain motion gives the bilayer the property of liquid crystal or a two dimensional fluid. Yes, if you can look here, yeah, this is just an explanation. Here we can find out we can find out that in the um, picture number A, the phospholipid in water, a phospholipid associate as pi layer, as we can see here. Why? Because they are roughly cylindrical amphibathic molecules. The flexible hydrophobic fatty acids that are in the middle here, okay, are not exposed to the water. Why? Because they are hydrophobic, they are water fearing. Whereas the hydrophilic phospholipid heads are in contact with water because they are uh, water loving or hydro hydrophilic. Uh, in the diagram B here, this is detergent in water. Detergent molecules are roughly cone shaped amphibathic molecules as well that associate in water as spherical structure, such like a vesicle. So if we are even talking about the uh, lipid bilayer organization, we can see that the, uh, in this video, we'll learn about the structure 
and organization of the lipid bilayer and uh, in a cell membrane. And right after this video, we'll discuss together the further structure of the uh, phospholipid bilayer. All cell membranes have the same lipid bilayer structure. The bilayer consists of two sheets of phospholipid molecules oriented in opposite directions. The heads of the phospholipids face outward. They are attracted to the watery environments inside and outside the cell. The hydrophobic phospholipid tails are sandwiched between the heads. This minimizes their interactions with water. Yes. All cell members. So here we have a very important structure. Actually, as I just mentioned, the physical studies on the artificial vesicles formed from isolated membrane lipids, it's also revealed another important property associated with the hydrophobic core, which is at normal biological temperatures, the fatty acid chains in the core are in, con are in content or in, I'm sorry, are in uh, constant motion as part of hydrocarbon chains that are rotating around the carbon to carbon bones. So this constant hydrocarbon chains motion here, it gives the, uh, the property or the bilayer property of a liquid crystal or a two-dimensional fluid. The bilayer are crystal-like in the lipid Okay, they are forming an order array. Okay, as you can see here in this uh, picture, with the with the head groups on the outer surfaces that are made up of the phosphate groups. Okay, that are hydrophilic, water loving. The molecules are free to rotate and move laterally. Okay, within their single layer, or even they can leaflet or they can leaflet. Leaflet means they can flip. They can flip flop. But here, this is the lateral movement in the single layer. And if they are flip flopped or they are leaflets, this is known as a leaflet movement. Okay. So generally, under normal conditions, a single phospholipid exchange places with its neighboring here in the lateral, lateral, laterally or within its single layer, in a rate of 10 to the power of minus, of minus 7 seconds. This is the rate by which they are moving or exchanging their places. So very fast lateral movement across pilea surface, okay, throughout the neighboring, exchanging to the rate of 10 to the power of minus 7 seconds. It's very, very fast, okay. While, or by contrast, the flip-flop movement of the phospholipid molecules from one leaflet from one layer to another, it is very, very slow in comparison to the lateral uh, movement. Okay, so the flip flop movement of the phospholipid molecule from one leaflet, okay, of an artificial bilayer here to the other side is rare event, okay, in the order of uh, days, surely, because it requires a large hydrophilic head group, such like this, for example, okay, in order to. Uh, or the, to bath throw the, the hydrophobic core here of the membrane. In the cells, this transpilayer movement is facilitated by special membrane pr proteins that are commonly known as or referred to as flipases. So, if you are emphasizing and summarizing again the membrane fluidity, we can say that the ordered arrangement of phospholipid molecules makes the cell membrane a liquid crystal. The hydrocarbon chains are in constant motion, allowing each molecule to rapidly move laterally, such like here in the same layer, on the same side of the bilayer, or flip-flop from one side of the bilayer to the other side. This is a rare event as well. And in the cells, it's facilitated by a special membrane proteins. So note that the amphibathic properties alone do not predict the ability of lipids in order to associate as bilayer, but shape in also is also very important. The phospholipids tend to have uniform width. They're roughly, they are roughly cylindrical shapes 
that are together with their amphibathic properties are responsible for the bile the bilayer formation. By contrast, many common detergents are amphibathic molecules, each containing a single hydrocarbon chain, like a fatty acid, for example, at one end and hydrophilic region at the other. These molecules are roughly cone-shaped with the hydro uh, with the hydrophilic regions at the um, at the other, while these molecules are roughly cone shaped with the hydrophilic end is forming the broad base and the hydrocarbon tail leading to the point. Because of their shapes, these molecules do not associate as bilayer. The detergents are not associate in order to form a bilayers, but instead instead they are tend to form spherical structures in water, okay, such like this, yes, yeah, such like this here. This is the uh, single uh, layer, okay, uh, spherical structures. And the detergents can solubilize oil. Why? Because the oil molecules associate with the hydrophobic interiors of the spheres here. If we talk about the flowed mosaic model that explains the membrane structure, yes. Actually, with the development of the electron microscopes in the 1950s, the cell biologists were able to see the plasma membrane for the first time. One of their most striking observations was how uniform and thin the membranes appear to be. The electron microscope revealed a three-layered structure, something like a, a trailer or truck, suggesting that the plasma membrane was a uniform structure, no more than 10 nanometers thick. This finding was surprising because membrane proteins were found to be far from uniform, and they, they are or they vary widely in composition and even in size. Some of these membrane-bounded proteins are quite large, with diameter much greater than 10 nanometers. They are spanning, and they are even found uh, internally or outside of the same surface membrane. We will go to discuss this in a couple of minutes. If I look into this picture, this is a uh, TEM of the plasma membrane, transmissible electron micrograph of the plasma membrane of a mammalian red blood cell. The plasma membrane separates the cytosol. This is the plasma membrane. This is the cell interior or the cytosol. This is the dark region form from the external environment, which is the outside of the cell, which is the lighter region here. The hydrophilic, the hydrophilic heads of the phosphate or the phospholipids are uh, parallel dark lines. Those are the parallel dark lines that are appearing here, and the hydrophobic tails are the light zone in the middle here that are found in between them. So this is just a roughly picture of the uh, fluid mosaic or the plasma membrane. Further studies actually for many membrane proteins should uh, show that one region or we can name it domain of the molecules uh, could always be found on one side of the bilayer whereas another part of the protein might be located on opposite side. These studies indicated that many membrane proteins extend completely through the lipid bilayer and that membranes contain many types of proteins of different shapes and even sizes. In 1972, the uh, St. Jonathan Singer and Graf Nicholson and Garth Nicholson of the uh, University of California, San Diego, proposed a model of membrane structure that represented a synthesis of known properties of biological membranes. This is known as a fluid mosaic model. It's wonderful, actually. So, what do we mean by the fluid mosaic model? This is the currently accepted model of the plasma membrane and other cell membranes in which protein molecules floating in a fluid phospholipid bilayer. So, again, the fluid mosaic model, a cell membrane consists of a fluid bilayer, this is a fluid bilayer of phospholipid, we can even magnify it, 
So here we have a phospholipid bilayer, okay, in which the proteins are embedded. This, those are the proteins that are embedded in this phospholipid bilayer, or otherwise they are associated, much like the, the, the tiles in a mosaic picture. This mosaic pattern is not static, however, so because the position of, uh, of many of those proteins are constantly changing as they move about like the ice bags in a float sea of the phospholipids. So those are the uh, spanning proteins that are even peripheral or integral. We'll talk about them in details in a couple of minutes as well. If we even look farther for this picture, in, uh, if we extend our explanation, we can say that the cell membrane are composed of a fluid bilayer of phospholipid. This is a phospholipid bilayer in which proteins move about like ice bags in a sea. Although the lipid bilayer consists mainly of phospholipid, other lipids such as cholesterol, here this is the cholesterol, this is a cholesterol molecule, okay, and even glycolipids, for example, this is the um, carbohydrate groups that are associated to protein that are forming glycoproteins. And here also we have the uh, glycolipid in which there is a uh, sugar the, or carbohydrate associated with the uh, phospholipid forming glycolipid. So the, we have even the glycoproteins and glycolipids. Okay, they are present even in the, um, in the, in the uh, fluid mosaic uh, model. So here, if we are even looking farther, the peripheral protein, the protein that are found either outside or inside the cell surface membrane. If you are looking for these peripheral proteins, they are loosely associated with the bilayer. Whereas the integral protein, the spanning, the embedded protein, those are known as integral proteins. Okay, shown here are transcendental proteins that extended through the bilayer. They are extending through the bilayer. They have a hydrophilic regions on both sides of the bilayer that are connected by a hydrophobic membrane uh, spanning regions. This is the hydrophobic membrane spanning region, the parts that are embedded, that are integrated, that are, in, that are spanning in the uh, lipid layer. So we can see even that some types of those integral membrane proteins are anchored in the membrane by proteins or other proteins, okay, that attach them to the cytoskeleton. This is the cytoskeleton, and those are other types that attach in some of the integral protein in the fixed places, so those ones are not moving, okay. So again, we can say that some types of integral membrane proteins, such like this one, are being anchored in the membrane by proteins, okay, those proteins attaching them to the cytoskeleton. Here we have the microtubule, which is an example of the cytoskeleton that we discussed before. Okay, uh, as will we have the glycolipids here, the carbohydrates that are attached to lipids, those are referred to as glycolipids, and the glycoproteins, okay, the carbohydrate that is attached to protein is known as glycoprotein. They are exposed on the extracellular surface. This is the extracellular surface. It is outside of the cell, and here is the cytosol. Okay, so the uh, glycolipid and glycoproteins are exposed on the extracellular surface. They play roles in cell recognition and adhesion to other cells. So this is the further detailed structure of the plasma membrane. If we are even continue talking about the biological. Uh, the biological membranes that are two-dimensional fluid, we can even explain it furthermore by saying that the fluid qualities of fluid bilayer are also molecule, okay, uh, that are embedded in them. Why? In order to move along the plane of the membrane, as long as they are not anchored in some way, surely because we did mention some of them are anchored. So again, the fluid qualities of the lipid bilayers also allow molecules embedded in them in order to move along the plane of the membrane. So, as um, David Fry and Michel Ededen 
uh, elegantly demonstrated in the 1970s, then they concluded and conducted experiments uh, in which they followed the movement of membrane proteins on the surface of two cells that had been uh, jointed. So if we are looking here for this experiment, and we illustrated it fully, I will even will ma uh, maximize the picture in order to make it much more comprehensive. Here in this uh, experiment, here, they labeled the membrane proteins. Okay, those are labeled membrane proteins. Uh, this is the human cell, and this is the mouse cell. The membrane proteins of a mouse uh, cell and human cell uh, were being labeled with fluorescent dye, okay, the uh, fluorescent dye markers in two different colors. And in, uh, in the step number two, the uh, human mouse hybrid cell forming, okay, when plasma membranes of mouse and human cell were fused together, if we are looking here, we will find that some mouse proteins migrated to the human side and some human uh, plasma proteins uh, migrated to the side of the mouse uh, cell. So as a result, the protein randomly distributed. After a short period of time, mouse and human proteins become randomly distributed through the, the membrane. This is the experiment. What is the result and conclusion from this experiment? After a brief period of in, uh, incubation, mouse and human cells uh, intermix it over the surface of the hybrid cells. After about 14 minutes exactly, the proteins of each species had become randomly distributed through the entire hybrid plasma membrane. This experiment demonstrated that proteins in the plasma membrane do move. And this is the most important thing. So even if we are looking for this experiment and how it was been done, we will see together this in that video. To test the hypothesis that membrane proteins can drift about in the plasma membrane, scientists isolated a human cell and a mouse cell and then caused the cells to fuse. In less than an hour, the membrane proteins became mixed together. This demonstrated that they were free to drift laterally through the hybrid membrane. Okay, so if we exceed farther illustrating this, we're going to say that for a membrane in order to function properly, its hydrophobic core must be in an, op in an optimal flow state. At normal growing temperatures, the cell membranes are flowed with a, constant, with a consistency similar to the vegetable oil at room temperature. If cells are rapidly cooled to lower than normal temperatures, however, membrane functions such as the transport of certain substances are inhibited or cease. Why? Because the motion of the fatty acid chains will be slowed and the lipid bilayer becomes too rigid. So, there are certain pro properties of membrane lipid have significant effects on the fluidity of the bilayer. If you recall from chapter number three that fats containing large amounts of, of saturated fatty acids that tend to be solid at room temperature due to the effects of many van der Waals interactions that occur between the closely aligned fatty acid chains. So we said by then that fats or oils with a mono or polysaturated fatty acids, however, they tend to be liquid at room temperature due to the presence of a double bond that eventually produce a kinks or produce kinks in their fatty acid chains. Such kinks prevent the close packing necessary for these interactions to happen or to occur. Many organisms have regulatory mechanisms for maintaining cell membranes in an optimal fluid state. So if I even look farther and even maximize the cell surface membrane, we can find here that we have a prelin structure or a prelin molecule, which is the cholesterol. So, if we if we exceeding our explanation here, we're gonna say that many organisms have regulatory mechanisms in order to maintain cell membranes in all optimally fluid states. Some organisms com uh, compensate for environmental temperatures 
uh, or for the uh, environmental temperature differences by altering the fatty acid content of their membrane lipid. For example, the Arctic fish, they tend to have higher levels of unsaturated fatty acids in the membrane lipid than the tropical species, for example. Why? In order to maintain optimal membrane fluidity, because as I just mentioned, the unsaturated fatty acids, they are tend to be liquid more or uh, rather than those that are saturated. So this is a way by which those living organisms are responding or adapted to the change in the environmental temperature. Uh, as a result, also, we have another organism, such as plants and many microorganisms, will adjust the ratios of saturated and unsaturated fatty acid in the membrane lipid in order to optimize fluidity in response to change in environmental temperatures that occur during the growing seasons. Some membrane lipids stabilize the membrane fluidity within certain limits. One such fluidity buffer is the cholesterol. It is a very important molecule. A, a, a cholesterol is a steroid that is found in animal cell membranes. A cholesterol molecule is largely hydrophobic, but it's slightly amphibathic. This is the molecule of the cholesterol. cholesterol. This molecule, again, is largely hydrophobic, but slightly amphibathic. Because of the presence of a single hydroxyl group, we took this in chapter 3 in the uh, lipids. Um, actually, in a phospholipid bilayer, this hydroxyl group that is found in the cholesterol associates with the hydrophilic heads of the phospholipid here. Okay, and associate with the hydrophilic head. The hydrophilic remainder of the cholesterol molecule fits between the fatty acids hydrocarbon chains here. So in a phospholipid bilayer, the hydroxyl group associates with the hydrophilic head. Here, the phosphate group, the hydrophilic head. While the hydrocarbon remainder of the cholesterol molecule fits here between the fatty acid carbon chains. Okay. So at low temperatures, a cholesterol molecules act as spacers. They are acting like a spacers between the hydrocarbon chains, restricting the van der Waals interactions that would promote the uh, solidifying. Also, the cholesterol help prevent the membrane from becoming weakened or unstable at higher temperature. Or if there is no cholesterol and the temperature increases, so the fluidity will be increasing. But those cholesterol molecules that are spanning the phospholipid bilayer, they are stabilizing the membrane and preventing the membrane from becoming weakened or unstable. The reason is that the cholesterol molecule interacts strongly with the proteins of the hydrocarbon chain closest to the, uh, to the phospholipid head. This interaction restricts motion in these regions. Plant cells surely have steroids other than cholesterol that carry out similar function. So we'll discuss together the importance of the cholesterol. If we even proceed farther, we can talk about the biological membranes that are fused and form closed vesicles. Very clearly, if you are looking here, lipid pi layers, particularly those in the liquid crystalline state, they have additional important physical properties. The bilayers tend to resist forming free ends. So as a result, they are self-sealing. They are self-sealing. And this is one of the most important things. They are self-sealing and under most conditions, spontaneously round up, form closed vesicles. They are round up in order to form closed vesicles, okay? Lipids bilayers are also flexible, if you are looking here, allowing the cell membranes to change shape without breaking. And under appropriate conditions, the lipid bilayer fuse with other bilayers as well. So the membrane fusion is an important cell process. When a vesicle fuses with another membrane, 
both membrane bilayers and their compartments become continuous. This is very, very important. Also, the various transport vesicles form, okay, from and also merge with membrane of the ER and Golgi complex. This is very important. Why? Because this is facilitating the transfer of materials from one compartment to another. A vesicle fused with the plasma membrane when a product is being secreted from the cell. So, if we talk about the membrane proteins that are included integral and peripheral proteins, as we just mentioned a couple of seconds, we can extend our explanation here by saying that there are or the two major classes of membrane proteins that are integral and peripheral proteins, they are defined by how tightly they are associated with the lipid bilayer. And here in this diagram, there is a different sort of those integrated uh, proteins or the membrane that included the integral and peripheral proteins. Firstly, we'll start talking about the integral proteins. Actually, the integral membrane proteins, okay, consider a protein that is tightly associated with the lipid bilayer of a biological membrane. It is a transcendable integral protein spanning embedded the phospholipid bilayer, spanning embedded, okay, transcendable here in the phospholipid bilayer. Even if we exceed the illustration talking about the integral membrane proteins, they are firmly bound. I allow this picture. They are firmly bound uh, to the membrane, okay? And also, if we are even looking here, we can also say that cell biologists usually can release them only by disrupting the bilayer with detergents because they are tightly backed, firmly backed. These proteins are amphibathic. The hydrophilic regions extend out of the cell. This is the hydrophilic because they are in the aqua solution outside or even in the cytosol, okay? While the, um, while the, uh, their hydrophilic regions are interacting here in the hydrophobic region of the phospholipid bilayer or in the fatty acid tails of the, of the membrane, this is the, uh, the structure of the uh, integral protein. So if we are looking even here farther, okay, let's see the, the let's watch the video uh, firstly and back again to illustrate the different sorts uh, in, in further details. A lipid bilayer is the structural foundation for the plasma membrane. Proteins embedded in the membrane or at its surface perform vital functions. Adhesion proteins help one cell adhere to another cell or to a protein component of an extracellular matrix. This is a ribbon model of the adhesion protein integrin. Communication proteins in the plasma membrane of one cell match up with identical proteins in the plasma membrane of an adjoining cell. Together, the proteins form a channel that connects the cytoplasm of the two cells and enables transmission of signals between them. This example is a gap junction. Receptor proteins embedded in a membrane are docks for diverse hormones and other signals. This is a ribbon model for a receptor for somatotropin or growth hormone. Recognition proteins are identity tags by which cells recognize non-self and self. They are glycoproteins with sugar side chains projecting above the membrane. The example shown here serves as an identity tag on red blood cells. Passive transport proteins are channels that passively enable one or more substances to cross a membrane. Some are always open. Others have molecular gates that close and open in controlled ways. Active transport proteins are also called ATPase pumps. Energy provided by ATP makes them actively pump solutes across the membrane. The blue ribbon model is of a transporter that pumps calcium across the membrane. So if we extend an illustration even, okay, and 
back to this prison to this um, diagram some integral proteins do not extend all the way through the membrane even they are integral so many others that are just illustrated they are known as transmembrane proteins which an integral membrane protein that spans the pi layer okay they are extending completely completely through the membrane some span the membrane only once whereas other went back and forth such like here okay for about 24 times the most common kind of transmembrane regions of the membrane proteins uh, we can talk about them as we just saw in this video uh, we have here we have here alpha helix okay this is the an example of a single alpha helix and if you recall from chapter number 3 that uh, there is the very, very detailed structure of the uh, alpha helix proteins. With the hydrophobic amino acids that are forming the uh, alpha helix protein side chains that project out from the helix into the uh, hydrophobic regions, okay? Uh, also, we have some protein that are spanning the membrane in the, in the form of a beta ruled or the uh, beta, parallel, uh, beta parallel proteins they are consisting of ruled up beta bladed sheets. Okay, those are very important. Why? Because uh, the water and other substances can pass through those uh, pores or gates that are made by this um, shape or the paddle protein. Actually, as I just mentioned here, these proteins for formations are paddle shaped and form uh, pores. Through those pores, the water and other substances may pass uh, in and out of the plasma membrane. So uh, also here we have another sort of uh, integral proteins. Okay, actually here it's an extra uh, cellular. This is a peripheral protein found extra cellular outside of the cell. Okay, it is uh, bound to an integral uh, protein. Here we have another peripheral protein. Okay, that is also bonded to an um, integral protein, but this peripheral it is a, systolic, a cytostolic, okay, a peripheral protein. Cytostol means inside the the cell in the cytoplasm. Um, I'll stop by this part today, and we will continue talking about the uh, the plasma membrane next time, inshallah. Till then, wish all of you to be safe and to be uh, protected. See you, inshallah. Stay safe and stay protected. And stay blessed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.